Hello and welcome to a lovely Scratch tutorial. If you're here, I'm assuming you know what Scratch is. If you don't, you should check it out. Scratch.mit.edu This tutorial series, I'm going to show you guys how to make my Pong 2.0. That'll advance before this is done. And basically, it's a very basic Pong version of the old school game. So right now, it is just one player versus an AI, and there are a lot more features that I need to add, but I'll get to them eventually. So start off, we need to go to Scratch and make a new, uh, new project. Now, you, I'm signed in, but if you're not signed in, you can still create things, you just can't save them. So if you wanna save anything, you should probably make an account. Now, Scratch is your initial sprite, but you don't need him since we're making Pong and he's not involved. So if you right click on him, you can hit delete and he goes away. Now, we need to add a new sprite. So let's click over here on the sprite and we'll start with the ball. Let's make that first. Just double click on the ball and it gets tossed into the frame. Now, if you want, you can go over to costumes and you can resize it. You can change colors. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So back in scripts, to start any scratch project, you generally want to have a when green flag clicked button. This just means that when you click on this green flag, this is the first bit of code that's going to run. So let's add every time we start this, we want to tell uh, we want to tell the ball where we want it to start. So if we head over to motion, you can see uh, go to x minus four negative 45, y negative 29. Drag that out there and every time this starts, we want the ball to start in the middle. So we're just going to make this 0 and 0. And if you click on it, it'll execute and move the ball to 0, 0. You could make it different places on the map, but this is the way, or this is where I feel like putting it. So now we need the ball to move as soon as the game starts. So if we go into control, or actually let's start in motion. Let's go move 10 steps and just see what it does. It starts and you can, there it is. So when you start it, it goes to the center and it moves 10 steps and I screwed it up already because I'm talented. Or maybe I didn't screw it up. What's happening right now is it's moving so fast we're not seeing it. So if you drag in control and wait one second, now hit the green flag goes over, waits a second, and jumps over. So before I put that wait one second in, it was just going zero and a bam right to 10. Way too fast for us to see that. So now it goes to the it goes to zero, zero, and then it moves 10 steps. Still really boring, we want it to keep doing that. So in control, if we grab a forever block, we can throw this up there and say, when green flag clicked, go to x equals zero, y equals zero, and then forever, just keep moving 10 steps. Just do this over and over and over. So if we run it now, it just runs until it hits the wall. Got something, but it'd be kind of nice if it at least bounced and came back. So if we head back over to motion, we have this nice little button that says, if on edge, bounce. So let's grab that one, chuck it in there. So now we have forever, we're gonna move 10 steps, if we hit the edge, we're going to bounce. Let's try it. So zero goes over, bounces, bounces. Beautiful. Now you see that the white spot on the ball keeps changing. That's because the ball is actually, the sprite is actually rotating 180 degrees every time it hits, which I think looks a little silly. So I'm going to stop that. So if we go to um, in, uh, where's that one? In motion, um, 
If you look down here, we have set rotation style. So we'll stick that at the beginning. We're going to say set rotation style to don't rotate. If you run it again with that, now the ball bounces. It doesn't rotate. I think it looks a little better this way. Then it's kind of boring that it just goes straight. So let's try pointing in a direction when we start. So if we go point in direction, and instead of telling it to point in a specific direction, if we go into operators, we can pick a random number. We just drag that in there. And let's go 45 to 135. You can put any numbers you want. I feel like putting those ones in. So now, if we hit play, it's at a slight upward angle. If we stop it and hit play again, it's at a much steeper angle. So now it's going to always pick a different random angle. Not necessarily different, but it's always going to pick a random angle between 45 and 135 degrees. So now you have a ball that will pick a random angle and it will bounce all around the, the area starting from the origin. Now one last thing we want to do before we stop this one, uh, stop this video, we're just going to give it a name and we'll just call it Pong Tutorial. You can call it anything you want. And then anytime you're going to close this sprite or scratch auto saves, but occasionally that feature, it only saves every few seconds. So before you close, always look up here and make sure it says saved. If it doesn't say saved, it'll say save now. Click that button and then close. All right, that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.